Hi, I wanted to talk to you today about a project I have going on in the Department of Archaeology with a range of different people. Um, as I say, I'm Lizzie. Um, I'm collaborating with people in archaeology, um, Dawn Hadley and Jennifer Krangle. I'm also collaborating with people in computer science, um, Steve Maddock and Peter Hayward. The project is based on this particular church. This is Holy Trinity Church in Rothwell in Northamptonshire. It is originally a medieval church but has been adapted over the years. Our interest in the church at Rothwell relates to what is going on below the ground. Underneath the contemporary church structure there is a Chardell Chapel, a small subterranean room which is filled with human remains, the bones of what we think are many thousands of individuals. So you can see from these images the black and white photograph is the Chardell Chapel photographed in the beginning of the 20th century. You can see the bones piled up along the edges of the room. And the picture beside that is our modern picture of the ossuary as it looks today. The first thing that jumps out, of course, is the fact the bones have actually been moved over the last 100 years or so. But the important thing about Rothwell is that the bones are actually still there. Rothwell is one of only two remaining in situ ossuaries in the UK. That is, the bones are actually still within the room which was originally designed to house them. So it's really quite a unique site as far as we're concerned as archaeologists. And yet it's attracted very little attention from anybody who was interested in studying funerary practices of the medieval period. And that's where we want to target our research as part of this project. One of the first things that's come out of this research in surveying what charnel chapels actually were and what they were used for is the fact that they weren't just storage rooms. They weren't just places where human remains were put when there was nowhere else for them to be stored. This room has windows. It would have been lit. It has a purpose-built staircase for access. And it actually has a wall painting, or at least the surviving remains of a medieval wall painting, on the back wall. This room was designed to be visited people were intended to go down there and visit the bones. And we think that the idea was that they would pray for the deceased in a, the context of, of medieval Catholicism, where intercessionary prayer, prayers for souls in purgatory, was very important. But in this case, they could pray for the deceased actually in the presence of the bones of those dead members of their community. So the important thing for us about the Rothwell Charnel Chapel project is that it's not just about academic research. The people of Rothwell, the local community, are really invested, they're really interested in this charnel chapel. And we wanted to work with them as part of a community project and building together information about what's going on at the site. There are all sorts of research topics within there, and I only have time to talk about one today, but suffice it to say that we're interested in the skeletal remains. I'm an osteologist, I study the human skeleton as a means of discovering about the identity of people in the past. We're interested in the building itself as an example of medieval architecture. We're interested in the situation, the way the church was used during the medieval period and how people interacted and visited it. We're also interested in preservation as well though, because human bone doesn't last forever. It's very damp down in the ossuary and the bones are gradually degrading. We're interested to know what we can do in terms of preserving this site for the future. We think about methodology as well. How are we actually going to analyse the skeletal remains that are down there? Osteological methods are predominantly based on looking at complete skeletons that are excavated from graveyards. But this is very different for me as an osteologist. The bones are all mixed together, they're commingled, and so we actually don't know which skull belongs to which long bone. There are challenges methodologically there that we need to overcome. And then finally, although there are only two remaining charnel chapels in England, there are many, many sites like this across the whole of the continent. And we're interested to know how the English phenomenon fits in with a wider <coughs> medieval European <coughs> proliferation of these sorts of buildings during the medieval period. So there's quite a lot to do. The first step of our project has actually been a bit technologically motivated. We had the opportunity to create a 3D model of the ossuary. Now this fits to our research agenda because we're interested in preservation and we're interested in promotion of this site so people could see it. It's difficult to get at, the staircase is very steep, people with mobility difficulties, young children, the elderly can't actually get into the ossuary. 
And of course, it is situated in Rothwell. Unless you go to Rothwell, you're not going to be able to experience the, the Charnel Chapel as it is. So we wanted to try and create a digital version of the Charnel Chapel so people could see it all over the world. So our digital project had four major aims. Um, one was to actually think about the way we can use imaging and digital technology to actually learn more about the site, about the building, about the way it was constructed, about how the human remains were actually organized and placed in there. We wanted more people to know about the site. It's fragile, it's delicate, and not everybody can find out about what's going on here. We wanted to think about how we could maybe contribute to the study of the human remains by using digital replicas of those bones. And we wanted to try and preserve the material as best we can, as it is right now. So to give you an idea of the kind of data we've generated as part of this imaging project, this image behind me is cloud data. This is a 3D digital model. It's not a photograph of the site. And you can see the cloud model is basically built up of lots of lots of individual dots. And these dots were generated by laser scanning equipment that we took down in the ossuary. At the moment, it looks a bit fuzzy. And that's because actually the dots aren't connected. The space between the dots. So if you zoom in on this picture, you just see lots of individual little data points. But because I've zoomed right the way out, you can start to see what the ossuary looks like. Your eyes fill in the gaps that are not there within the data. So this is the view of the ossuary from the entrance. And you can see the characteristics. You've got these stacks of human bones surrounded by wooden um, structures. And you've got what is known in the ossuary studying world as skull walls. These shelves lining the walls on which human skulls have been stored. There's an example of a skull wall. This image is, is you can't see this image if you go into the ossuary because there's too much stuff in the way. It's a very small room, it's very enclosed. And one of the things this technology allows us to do is to step back and see the various components of the ossuary more clearly. And we can go in, we can count the crania, we can think about the degree of preservation, and we can start to build up a more detailed archive of what there actually is in Rothwell in the ossuary. This is the next stage of processing of this 3D data. This is mesh data, where the dots have been connected together to try and form solid surfaces. Our colleagues in computer science are really interested in the ways in which we can actually work with this data to try and generate as realistic, as lifelike a model of the ossuary as possible. And you can see we're getting there, but we're not quite there yet. Some parts of this image look a bit sort of smeary, is probably the best way of describing it. You can see where the surfaces of the skulls in particular have had to be sort of approximated by the technology. And one thing we're looking into in more detail is the ways in which extra scanning data can be knitted together to produce a more coherent, more comprehensive model that you can zoom in on and actually get a realistic image of what you're looking at. One initial finding from the 3D data, which is particularly exciting, is the ability to think about the room's structure as if you're standing outside it. Now, obviously, this view I've shown you here is, is impossible to see in real life. It's under the church. It's surrounded by earth. But you can see from this image how detailed the vaulting structure of this room is. And actually, it fits perfectly with the illustration that has been generated by an architect, which is the little line drawing at the bottom. It shows you how the room is actually structured. Incredibly interesting facet of this is on the far left-hand side, you can see there's a little groove just at the top of the vaulting. We think that may have been a light well to allow light into the room. Now, traditional views of ossuaries is that they would have been dark, damp places. But with a light well, this could have been a very open, very bright room during the medieval period. So what are our future plans? Well, we haven't really done a great deal yet. There's much more to be doing with this particular project. We clearly need to refine and develop the digital model. There's plenty more things we can do with this technology to really capture the ossuary in the most effective way. We have a project website, and we intend to share the model on the website so that more people across the world, those who are interested in studying ossuaries across the continent, for example, can see what we have in Rothwell. We want to adapt the model to help us analyze the material. 
and we want to try and share our findings more broadly so we can help to inform conservation strategies of sites like this so they can pres be preserved more effectively for the future. Our website and our Facebook page. If you're interested in Rothwell, please do look us up. Thank you very much.